It was about a becoming. The living son of God becoming flesh. I want to challenge you this morning because the word, the living word still dwells on this earth. It was never meant for the visible, obtainable, touchable word to leave this earth. That's why Jesus established the church. We are the household of faith. We yeah. are the ecclesia, the gathering of the saints together. Yeah. And his spirit dwells in us, church. Yeah. Although I will not claim to be the living word as Christ was, his word and his spirit lives in me, church. Yeah. The word of God is still flesh through the church. Yes. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you being blessed this morning? Yes. Yeah. Well, I pray that you do something with this, church. Pray that you do something with this church. Flesh did not become. Flesh did not become the word. The word became flesh. Visible. Touchable. I want you to know that it's really important for you to get a hold of that truth. And I'll tell you why. It's really important because there's morons in the church today. There could be a couple here this morning. I don't know. I had a conversation with, with a lady a few weeks ago, and I may have just alluded to it just a little bit, but as I was preparing this sermon, I, I, I remembered the conversation that I had with her. Church, sometimes as a believer, you have to graciously, gently correct folks, amen? Because they will misalign the word of God. They will misinterpret the word of God, and they will influence others to do the same. She began to tell me that she was like this, she was a financial, you know, organizer and planner, financial organizer and planner. And she said, I'm also a believer. I heard you were a pastor. And I said, yes, I am. And she said, well, I might would like to come to your church sometime because I come in and teach everyone how it is that God wants us to be wealthy. How God wants his people to be wealthy. And I teach them how that if that's not happening, that there's something that's stopping Something that's not right in their walk with God. And I said, well, there's no way I could have you come and teach that. And she said, why? Well, well, I said, well, I said it, that, that is not in the Bible. It's not in here. She said, oh, well, yeah, you need to, te you need to learn the hundredfold. I said, look, you are bastardizing the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's illegitimate. See, it's important, church, to understand that the word became flesh. Because, see, I could teach that kind of gospel that she was speaking of. I can take little parts of scripture and chop them up and put them together in a little teaching. And I could teach that to you. But, church, when you look at Jesus Christ... The word became flesh. When you look at the life of Jesus Christ, you cannot teach that. Are you here this morning? When you look at the way Jesus walked and the way he, the way he ministered, the way he treated folks, and, and, and when you look at his prior, the priorities that Jesus had when he was on this earth, you, you will not see that he was interested in people becoming wealthy or something was wrong with them. Church, it is important for you to get a hold of the fact, the truth, that the word became flesh. Because anything that is said that does not look like Jesus, you need to throw out. Are you here this morning? If it does not look like Jesus. See, so you don't have to have all that scripture memorized. It's good to memorize and study scripture. But there is a general rule that you can follow. If what you're doing or what somebody else is doing or what they're teaching you does not look like the life of Christ, it, it begs to be questioned. It needs to be questioned. When people say we ought to take, 
we got to take all these, all these people and all these liberals and all these homosexuals and just gather them up and shoot them. Somebody told me that two weeks ago. I said, well, I can't, I can't join in with you on that one. I can't join with you on that one. It doesn't look like Jesus at all. Amen? Amen? To stand out with picket signs and protest people that don't believe the way I do, I can't do that. Why? Because that doesn't look like Jesus at all. Amen. That doesn't look like Jesus at all. There's certain things that I don't have to quote you a verse because I can look at the living word and I can look at Jesus and the way he lived, what he did, what he said, how he taught, how he treated folks. I can look at the living word in flesh and, and know right away, uh-uh, it doesn't look like Jesus at all. Are you here with me this morning? Anytime someone makes a claim to you, church, in God's name, that doesn't sound right and questions you and brings you, you need to look at Jesus. You need to question, does this look like Jesus? If it doesn't look like Jesus, church, you need to throw it out. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. Church, Christ, we are celebrating Christ this morning. I don't have a problem with people celebrating the birth of Christ. I'm not proud of that. But I don't think we ought to stop there. Christ didn't just exist before Christmas, church. Christ didn't just exist before Christmas. He existed before creation. He existed before creation. Are you with me this morning? Yes, thank you, Lord. See, if you go on from John chapter 1, verse 1, and go on to verse 2, it says that he was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, now I know that some folks believe that Jesus is one. There is just one God, and, and, and I understand that. I, I, I choose to believe that, that God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't know who he's talking about here. He was in the beginning with God. He wasn't with himself, amen? He, he was with God. Are you with me this morning? Verse 3 says that all things were made through him. And without him, nothing, nothing was made that was made. God didn't make anything. I love that. God didn't make anything without Jesus. God didn't make anything without his son. They did it all together. And the word of God says that the Holy Spirit actually hovered over the waters. The Holy Spirit hovered and just kind of hovered over creation, church. Church Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to, I know I haven't really been preaching good yet. I'm going to try to get there. Amen. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. It says, who, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. And taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Church, can we give you praise? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want to I want to close with just a couple more things, if I could. Amen. And we celebrate Christ, we celebrate 
the birth of Jesus Christ, we celebrate that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We celebrate His, His power, the strength of God and the love of God. One of the things that I think that we kind of miss sometimes, church, is that Jesus, it wasn't just the Word becoming flesh. It wasn't just the Messiah coming to die on the cross. Yes, it is all of those things. But I think sometimes we fail to see, even from scriptures like John 3.16 that everyone has memorized, that Jesus was given. Jesus, the Son of God, was given away. Was given to us. That he was truly a gift and still is. And still is. For God so loved the world that he gave. I've read that a hundred times and just kind of read it kind of along the lines of that God sent his son. But it really means that. That, that God loved the world so much. That he gave his son away to us. He gave his son away to you. That whoever would believe in him would not die. Would not suffer the pain and the death of sin. Would not suffer and endure the payment of their sin. They would not perish but they would be given also eternity in the presence of God. Gives a whole new meaning to Christmas, celebrating Christ. Church, we have a reason to celebrate Christ. Hallelujah. It's, sometimes I, I, I wonder, I just, I think about these things, you know, when, when, when people ask me, uh, most of the time they don't, uh, they don't ask, but sometimes they do, uh, sometimes they will assume. Uh, I, I, I don't like to leave anything unsaid or leave people guessing whether I'm a believer or not, amen. I, I like to just put it out there where they don't really have to ask, but it's good if they do ask, amen. But I don't know how some folks, you know, you know, are you a Christian? You know, I've, had, I've, I've, saw, I've seen people, I've heard them answer that way before. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Almost like you guess you are. Church, there's no doubt about it. Church, there's no doubt about it. I'm saved, set free. Bought by the blood of the Lamb. There's no doubt about it. I'm Christian. Amen. Yeah. I'm not always like Christ. I will admit to you. Christian means of Christ. I, I will tell you. I'm not always like Jesus Christ. All the time consistent. Perfectly doing what Jesus said. Living how he lived. And mimicking him. Amen. As the way we're taught in scripture. But church, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm saved, set free. Bought by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. Delivered. Saved. I possess eternal life. And I have Christ. He's been given to me, church. There's no, hmm, maybe, huh, yeah, kind of, sort of, well, I guess so. Church, I'm saved. Yes, thank you, Lord. I am saved. Are you saved this morning? Are you Christian this morning? Are you? Do you belong to God this morning? You have a reason to celebrate. It's time to stop frowning, amen? You can frown later on, amen? Not, to, not right now. Not right now. We have a reason to celebrate. We have been given Christ. He doesn't just exist, church. We've been given Christ. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. People talk about reasons. I'm just overwhelmed. Church, we must, some, some folks must be living in a box 
living in a cave. The conversations, I'm just amazed at the conversations that are being had by people that I, that I work with and people that I, I associate with. The conversation was brought up yesterday. What, everything, you know, they're watching TV. What is the meaning of life? I was so happy. I was just like, let me go. Watch my kids. Pastor, come on. I was just like, whoa. What is the meaning of life? We discuss the meaning of life and, 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 and why we worship him in church. And, and the world doesn't seem to get it. Amen. The world just, just doesn't seem to get it. Church, I feel sorry for them. Are you with me this morning? I feel sorry for those that don't have Christ. I regret that they don't know him. I want them to know him. Why we worship him, they don't seem to get it. What I don't get, church, is how can we not serve him? How can we not serve him? How could we not worship him? How could I not do it? How could I not live for him? How could I not seek him? How could I not pray and talk to him? How could I not? It's ridiculous when you realize what God has done and who Christ is and what God has laid out for us. It's ridiculous the thought of not serving him. It is ridiculous the thought of not loving him and worshiping him. Are you with me this morning? I'm almost done. Hang on just for just a minute or two. Some of you know I'm lying. I'm going to share with you. And I, I we, we exaggerate. I mean, I mean, we exaggerate. And when I say we, I mean Hodos mainly. But, but most of us do. 